Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I'm Vishal Dahia and this week we will take up the issue of civil war in Syria. The ongoing conflict in Syria has completed seven years in March. Pro-democracy demonstrations which erupted in southern part of the country in 2011 have now turned into a full-scale civil war. According to Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, more than 3,50,000 people have died so far, which includes more than 1 lakh civilians. Another 56,900 are reported missing and presumed dead. 53% of the total population of Syria has also been uprooted from their homes due to the unending civil war. Over the years, several countries have got involved in this conflict and with many groups and countries with their own respective agendas, the situation on the ground has become more complex. While Russia and Iran are supporting the embattled President Bashar al-Assad, US, Turkey and Saudi Arabia have thrown their weight behind different rebel groups who have their own respective agendas. As for the latest situation, on the ground, the government forces have regained control of some of the biggest cities, but large parts of the countryside and most of the region east of Euphrates River is still held by rebel groups and the Kurdish-led STF alliance. The tussle between two major players, that is Russia and the United States of America, has further complicated the situation in Syria. Recently, President Trump indicated withdrawal of U.S. forces from the war-torn country. Presidents of other three major players, that is Russia, Iran and Turkey, have also held dialogue to find common ground in Syria and look for solutions to the crisis. So what is at stake for all the foreign players and several Syrian groups? And is there an end in sight for the ongoing conflict, which has also become a huge humanitarian crisis, not only in the region, but in the whole world. For this, we have a distinguished panel of guests in the studio. Let me introduce them to you. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Neera Shrivastava, former ambassador. We have with us uh, Mr. Wail Awad as well, uh, South Asia Bureau Chief of uh, South Asia News Agency, SANA. And we are also joined by Mr. K.P. Fabian, another uh, former ambassador, diplomat and a writer as well. Welcome all of you to Rajasabha Television. Let's uh, begin with you, uh, uh, Mr. Shrivastava. Specifically, uh, it's something which has gone on and on and on for seven long years. And uh, instead of uh, de-escalation, this entire conflict seems to be escalating with every passing day, despite all the efforts. Where do we stand as far as Syrian conflict is concerned? Actually, I think that, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the main bloody phase of the Syrian conflict is over mm -hmm. and now the end game is beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, the agenda of some foreign powers mm -hmm. uh, in, in the West and in the Gulf was to uh, uh, you know, overthrow the regime of uh, President Assad mm -hmm. and install their own uh, man mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Syria. So, but that has failed. They have lost the bat military battle to overthrow President Assad and uh, all the major population centers are under his control. You talked about eastern Syria mm -hmm. not being under his control. See, that is where uh, some foreign powers still have their bases mm -hmm. and they are trying to use their pre presence in that part of the country. Uh, to uh, make life difficult for uh, President Assad. Okay. So, the current situation is that all the major population centers are, uh, you know, under control of mm -hmm. the legitimate Syrian government. Uh, but uh, the eastern part remains under the control of some foreign powers. And the, now we, we are seeing the battle uh, to remove these foreign powers from the eastern part. From the eastern part. Yes. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Awad on this. Mr. Awad, do you agree with them, Mr. Shrivastava, that uh, uh, you know uh, the bloody part of the battle is over and it is the end game which is begun now? Absolutely right. He is right in uh, pointing out to this, and I will start from where he left because uh, this now we are in this program. We are commemorating three events. Major event took place in the region. One was the invasion of Iraq in 2001 by the United States troops and UK unilaterally into Iraq where the chaos created in Syria and the rest of the Arab world because of the occupation of Iraq. 
B was also the uh, the eighth years. Now we are entering the eighth year of the war on Syria, mm -hmm. which is nothing a civilian uh, civil war at all. It's just a mere uh, regime change, as the ambassador was pointing out, because that was part of the conspiracy of the United States, the clean break policy that they have put it in 1996 by the new cons and uh, Richard Pearls, who was the, uh, the, uh, the advisor to mm -hmm. Netanyahu those days before he joined with the American administration to make sure that the Syrian government and seven and most of the Arab nation are fra fragmented and divided. So the plan was this. And thirdly, which is the most important part, is that we are entering the fourth year of the war led of Saudi the Arabia coalition on Yemen, which is nobody's talking about. So therefore, the war in my country is part of a larger picture of destructions of a countries which were more secular, more uh, stable, more progressing than the rest of the Arab countries, than the rest of the countries in the region. Mm -hmm. And that is why Syria was targeted. In fact, now if you look at the eastern Ghouta part where the Syrian government have taken care of the civilian, where more than 180,000 civilians have moved into the Syrian uh, government, and there's a deal now with those terrorist groups to move them back into the northern part of Syria. And there is also talk in different parts for reconciliation and rebuilding of Syria. That show you the confidence in the Syrian people that they were able to defeat terrorism on the ground. Okay. Having said that, I would always say, yes, I will agree that there is a illegal forces inside Syria, whether the Turkish forces, which is occupying part of Syria, illegal military bases, more than 20 military bases created by the American and northern eastern part, where they have supported the SDF forces. But at the end of the day, once we finish from Ghouta, the, tw the eyes will be more on the northern part of Syria. We will be definitely liberating it from the terrorists and from the illegal occupation. Okay. We'll come to the uh, reconciliation and rehabilitation part a little bit but uh, uh, later. But let me bring in uh, uh, Mr. Fabian on this. Uh, Mr. Fabian, several uh, you know, foreign players are involved here. And as uh, Mr. Awad was also pointing out, uh, be it the Turkish forces or uh, Russian, Iranian, Saudi Arabian, United States... Uh, their presence seems to have uh, muddied the water so much that it is getting a little difficult to find a solution here. That's what uh, the gist seems to be. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Because uh, mention was made about uh, Syria being targeted, that uh, the secular country is being destroyed and all that. Mm -hmm. That is, of course, uh, a part of the story. But uh, I would put it differently. When the so-called Arab Spring, I say so-called, mm -hmm. because the title of my book is The Arab Spring That Was and Wasn't. Because it was there, but the, it stopped being there. Mm -hmm. Now, but it was there. Now, even in Syria, you see, how did it start? Some school kids wrote on the wall, Doctor, it is your time to go. Okay? And uh, this was after uh, uh, Mubarak left. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what you have to understand is that uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad has been in power since 2000. Mm -hmm. And his father was in power for a much longer spell. In other words, some people who came onto the street, they wanted reforms. Reforms which they were expecting when... Dr. Bashar al-Assad took over in 2000. Now, those promises were not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But once it started like that, Dr. Awad is quite right. Other f powers, especially from the West and also from the Gulf, they started getting involved so that, you know, uh, this thing will last longer and Syria will be, you know, fragmented, destroyed. And to protect their own interests. Yeah, yeah, their own now, there I want to make one point. See, the foreign powers that are involved, you certainly listed them correctly. But uh, basically, but for the military support from Iran and Russia, Bashar al-Assad would have fallen. You see? But then what happened was that uh, Iran sent a delegation to Moscow saying that, listen, Mm -hmm. The situation is bad. We have to do something. And then later, you know, Russia agreed. And if you remember, mm -hmm. September 30th, 2015, Russia started the bombing operation, mainly the Air Force. And uh, Iran, of course, had its own 
set up and Hezbollah. Yeah, and that had significantly yeah. turned the tide yeah. in favor so, of uh, so Mr. that is one side. One side. In other words, the foreign powers that supported Bashar al-Assad were prompt, firm, and clear-headed. They had a purpose, mm -hmm. and they acted purposefully. Whereas uh, the other powers, United States, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, US, they were muddle-headed. Especially United States under President Obama. Mm -hmm. August 2011, President Obama told President Assad, it's your time to go. But he did not follow it up with any consequential action. And when there were reports of uh, chemical attacks, now I'm not suggesting that uh, President Assad did it or somebody else did it because OPCW, you know, Organization for the Prohibition mm -hmm. of Chemical Weapons, they have not yet decided, though they are not supposed to decide. That's a different matter. Anyway, we don't know mm -hmm. who, uh, who did it. Okay. But the point is, uh, Obama had said, you know, these are red lines. Okay. And he was about to bomb. Mm -hmm. Then he had second thoughts. In other words, uh, those who supported the rebels against President Bashar al-Assad and the rebels themselves are disunited. They, are, <laughs> they don't have a uh, you know, common, they can't get united. So they, they got foreign support in a very discontinuous fashion. Okay. You know, so that is how it has dragged on. And that's what you have to understand. Okay, so, so it's, it's, it's still not a very clear picture out there. And when we come back to the same question, uh, Ambassador Srivastava, right now, if you look at the present context, uh, Trump, uh, President Trump says that, you know, uh, we may, that is, he's hinting at that the United States will withdraw their troops. If that happens, there are a lot of questions being asked. Who will it benefit? Will it benefit uh, uh, the Russian side? Will it benefit uh, uh, some other rebel groups? Uh, or will it leave a vacuum uh, wherein, uh, you know, you might not know uh, where the solution lies again? Or will it be beneficial to the entire country? Well, first of all, uh, I was happy to hear President Trump say that we should withdraw our, all our troops from Syria. Mm -hmm. Because of the simple reason that the presence of American troops and bases in Syria is completely illegal under international law. Okay. We must make a, let me make a very clear distinction at this point between the presence of Russia and Iran in, in Syria and the presence of United States and Britain, France and the Gulf allies in Syria. Russia and Iran have been legally invited by the president of Syria the, who is internationally a legitimate president yeah. to help him to fight terrorism in Syria. Mm -hmm. So the presence of Syria, of, of Russia and Iran is legal under international law. Okay, so it they has have, legitimacy. They have, they have every right to be there because they have been invited by the internationally legitimate government of Syria. Mm -hmm. Whereas these other people are illegal, okay. you know, Americans, mm -hmm. they have no business to be there. The pro and the problem is that, you know, they, if Trump has, Trump says that I want them to be out. But the problem is that the CIA and the Pentagon and other agencies of the United States, they don't want uh, the, the Americans to get out of Syria because mm -hmm. their objective of regime change has failed. Okay. And they are not used to accepting defeat, you know, uh, since, since 1991, collapse of the Soviet mm -hmm. Union. The Americans have had the f whole world open to, you know, their military uh, objectives. They, they uh, invaded Iraq 2003, they bombed Libya, they bombed Serbia, they, they carried out a coup in Ukraine. Now, you know, they got used to all this regime change business. So what will, if, you know, I don't think that the American bases of the troops are getting out of Syria anytime soon, okay. even if President Trump says so. Mm -hmm. what, is, what I think will happen is that the Syrian Arab army and the Russians and the Iranians and even there are Iraqi, you know, militia fighting there and Hezbollah, they will have to militarily throw out the Americans and all the West, you know, Western countries from the eastern Syria. It will take time. Nobody can tell how much it will take. I am looking at it in terms of one year or two years. I mean, I'm not saying it will take 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at a, a, a timeline of one to two years. 
during which the uh, Syrians, uh, uh, Russians and the Iranians should throw out these people from eastern Syria and Turkey from, uh, from northern Syria. Turkey okay. also, you know, Turkey has no business to occupy parts of Syrian territory. Okay, it has its own uh, uh, interest as far yeah. as uh, the, the Kurdish no, forces there are right, But you cannot, you cannot grab the yes. territory of that, any other, other country. That part definitely is there. But no. let me bring uh, Mr. Mr. Awad no, on this. Mr. Awad, uh, uh, you know, uh, one is, do you agree with them, Mr. Uh, Neeraj's point? And second is, uh, what's your take? As in, if it, if it happens, uh, will it benefit uh, the situation in Syria specifically, the withdrawal of U.S. troops? Well, look, uh, it will we, uh, benefit Syria. Well, we, well, we, when we're speaking on terms of the wider picture and wider perspective of the conflict in Syria, the geopolitics important of Syria is a prime important for all the countries you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. The diplomatic fight for the pipelines to pass through from Saudi, from Qatar to Saudi Arabia to Jordan, Syria to Europe, and from Baku to from Azerbaijan to come to, to Turkey, and even from Iran to Iraq to Syria and to Europe, was all part of the conflict of interest mm -hmm. among the nations who wanted to take the advantage of it so the isolation of Russia could be at one angle. Secondly, Russia, yes, absolutely, Ambassador was right. Russia have a military pact with the Syrian government for the last 45 years. They are legally in Syria. They have a military, military basis, and that is why one of the the prime cause for attacking Syria was to remove the food of, from the warm water of the Mediterranean of the Russian, because the Russian are in Syria. Now, this is the same thing. Look at the patterns that are happening. When Pakistan was turned into a hub for terrorism in Afghanistan, for Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda was born, Afghanistan, Pakistan now paying the price. The same project was carried out to Iraq. The same project was carried out in Iraq, and Syria paid the price for defeating the American occupation in Iraq. Similar fashion, now Turkey has been involved in Syria, so Turkey is next. The target for the United States is Turkey. NATO now thinking in terms of, now though they have denied it, of moving a Cyrillic military base from Turkey into Syria, into Jordan, into some other places, because why? Turkey is taking a new alliance. There is a new reshaping to, for the international world order. After the First World War, we have a new changes. So I think we need to see the Syrian picture from those angles. I will come back because of discovery of oil and gas in Syria. That's also part. Yes, there was a legitimate demonstration inside Syria for uh, reforms, for political, economic reforms, but it was hijacked by the terrorist organization, by the Muslim Brotherhood organization, supported from across the border. The former prime minister of Qatar himself admitted that 137 billion spent by his country only to defeat Assad because it's a conspiracy to remove him. That's on the behest of the American instruction. Similar fashion, the, uh, Saudi Arabia paid the similar amount. So we have to see the picture, wider picture from what the smear media campaign is showing you that what's happening in Syria is a civil war. Syrian people survived for 10,000 years. They will survive again. They will rebuild the country. American has to move out of Syria. Mm -hmm. The moment American illegally, and I wish American friends are watching this, I will tell them, please move your troops. Learn from history. In 1980, you had the same problem in Lebanon. Now you will have the same problem in Syria. Tomorrow you attack the Syrian interest or anybody interest in the region. Mm. All your men underground are at, at targets. Okay. Let's look at the other aspect and let's bring in uh, Ambassador uh, Fabian here. Uh, Mr. Fabian, the other side of the story is that Turkey, Iran and Russia, they are getting together to try and find a solution. This is a second round of tripartite talks uh, uh, have happened. Now, they, all, all three of them, ha have also different interests. Russia and Iran, as both our panelists are pointing out, uh, are supporting Bashar al-Assad. Not the case exactly with Turkey specifically. It has its own interests. So will these three uh, major players, uh, if United States is left out and if they withdraw, will they be able to go ahead and find a solution together? Uh, as regards uh, United States leaving, we still do not know. Mm -hmm. But... My view is that it could happen okay. because it may not be sustainable <laughs> to remain there militarily and to, you know, sort of gain more territory or to retain. And uh, in order to avoid a military humiliation, they may work out something and go. Now, coming to the quest uh, question you asked, uh, you know, Iran, Russia and Turkey, you implied that Russia and Iran are on one side and Turkey on, is on the other side. No, my Not take, exactly. Ah, my take is a little different. Mm -hmm. I think even between Iran and Russia, interests vary. Yes. What Russia wants, 
is fairly clear, and that is uh, a sort of a diplomatic and military presence in the region, what's called the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And Syria, of course, as Dr. Awad Which is strategically important pointed for them. out, you know, it has been going on for the last 40, mm -hmm. 45 years. Steady friendship, you know what I mean. So that is one thing uh, for Russia. And Russia also has, apart from the military, Tartus, mm -hmm. the base, and they are having more bases, Air, Air Force base also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So military and diplomatic and also economic. Okay. Iran has economic interests. It also has the other interest that is uh, the uh, connectivity with uh, Lebanon so that uh, military supplies can be sent to Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the interest of Turkey? Territory on the one hand. Secondly, Erdogan, President Erdogan is trying to, you know, resurrect the Ottoman Empire. Like the Bible, you know, Lazarus. The Turkish pride. Yeah, Lazarus was brought back to life by Jesus. Erdogan thinks that he can bring back to life the Ottoman Empire and he would like to have in Damascus a government which is uh, deferential, which will take advice, instructions from Turkey. And he has a third interest, and that, uh, you know, that uh, there should be no link up between the Kurds in uh, Syria and the Kurds in Turkey, mm -hmm. a matter which he, is, he has been mismanaging consistently using brutal force. So these are his interests. Okay. So I don't think these interests coincide. So even if Americans militarily withdraw, that you know, it doesn't mean that these three will be able to uh, bring peace to Syria. Okay. Uh, Mr. Abad, I'm sure you, uh, you would like to respond to what uh, Mr. Fabian has said, but uh, in addition to that, the same question is that, uh, you know, these uh, forces, these nations who you say that uh, are legally uh, present in uh, Syria, will they be able to go ahead and find a solution, if at all, United States uh, withdraw its troops? United States will not withdraw its troops. United States wanted a military bases all over the world, including Syria and Iraq. They have mm -hmm. already made up their mind. They have already changed their military doctrine, which is including military bases and drone culture attacking nation without putting boot on the ground. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I would say that the American interest in the region, not only for the oil and gas and destabilization, they are trying to cut the route, what they are calling now, creating a, a Shia crescent from Iraq to Iran to Syria to Lebanon. And they forgot that even, even Hamas is a Sunni, uh, Muslim majority, not, not a single Shia, but Hezbollah is a Shia. But the thing is that the propaganda has to continue that there is a crescent anti-resistance, anti-American forces, which is resisting American hegemony and the Israeli hegemony in the region, is represented by these four countries. Mm -hmm. What is represented by Saudi Arabia and now Israel, the collaboration and the honeymoon they are trying to create between the two of Mohammed bin Salman and Netanyahu, that there will be a new alliance, a new axis to, defa to defeat this axis. And that is where the Americans are working. So the American, the whole project is profitable. The army and the arm industry is profiting out of it. Why they should finish it? Mm -hmm. If we are able to sell 500 billion dollars arms only to Saudi Arabia. If you are able to sell 200 million dollars, billion dollars to Kuwait or to Emirates and to everybody, why you should stop the board? But, you but, need to create more battle zone. Uh -huh. That is the main objective of the arm industry. But Mr. Awad, almost similar, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, issues are at stake for uh, the other side as well, be it Russia, be it Iran, as uh, uh, and Mr. Fabian was pointing out, even for Turkey as well. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. The, the wider perspective picture is that we are living in a very turbulent world. Mm -hmm. We are looking for more battle zones, more conflict, more interfighting among nations. Ailing Europe, United States is failing. It's, it's weathering out its influence in the region. Russia is stepping in. Regional players are coming in. So there definitely there will be a regional conflict in the region. And how to create that? By instigating the people, by using their democracy and other social unrest, a social demand as legitimate for the people and utilize it for destruction. How can you destroy a country in the name of revolution when you are able to destroy totally the country and the people killing them? That's not a revolution. That's absolutely the main aim of ethnic cleansing and dividing the world on ethnic lines and on political lines and on religious lines. Okay, uh, we're running short of time, but quickly, 
why it is, where does the solution lie then? We'll, we'll go to uh, Mr. Neeraj as well later. I think we have to recognize the, that there is a multipolar world. There is a BRICS country which can demand and, and, uh, and, and put their map on the world uh, affairs. They should step in, that international community should step in to stop the wars. If we all think that peace is a strategy, then I think peace can be achieved in the region. Without you denying, you occupy, you make more aggressive, you are more destroying the country. I think the American has to understand that this world is no more unilaterally. They okay. have to admit there are other power, other interests also. Let us reshape the international world order to find out a solution for not only for Syria, not only for Libya, not only for Yemen, for the rest of the world because this battle zone will move from our country. Maybe it come to South Asia back. So you better fasten your belt because the war is approaching anywhere in the world because the arm industry is very much interested. The turbulence, the economic the, uh, problem, recession, all this is a conflict of interest. And where interest goes, the war will go on. Okay. And Mr. Srivastava, quickly, if you can sum up, what exactly is the solution from here onwards then in Syria? Well, it's a very simple solution in my view. The, the solution is that the Americans and their allies should get, should, should get out of the country, mm -hmm. first of all. Turkey should get out of the country. And uh, Syrian territorial integrity should be restored. The whole of Syria should be under the control, effective control of the legitimate uh, elected government of Syria. Mm -hmm. And uh, several opinion polls have shown that President Assad retains the support of uh, the vast majority of Syrians. So to call him a dictator uh, would be wrong. Mm -hmm. Because, and as far as the reforms are concerned, we were talking about reforms. Mm -hmm. He announced that several years ago, many reforms. So uh, in short, the solution to the problem in Syria is all these troublemakers who wanted regime change, they should get out of the country. Okay. And I think if they do that, peace will return to Syria and um, rebuilding will start and Syria will arise again. Okay, uh, yeah. so clearly it looks yeah. like as our panelists have also pointed out that uh, the situation on the ground in Syria is very much complex and the solution also, uh, or rather the path to the solution will also be equally complex. But all those who have a stake in Syria will have to get together and find a solution which will be beneficial to the people of not only Syria but also to the entire region. We'll come back again next week with a different set of guests and different topic. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.